Researchers in Finland have installed the world's first fully working sand battery. We are heating the uh, sand battery with uh, clean electricity and then storing the heat. It's a bit strange, but it's, it's cheap, it's easy to get. If you haven't had your head in the sand, you probably know that the problem we face when trying to get the most out of our renewable energy sources is that we need to find good ways to store energy. It's a big problem that we can't ignore, so over the past few years, many new battery technologies have been researched and developed. Some of them have even gotten far enough along that they are no longer just ideas. In July of last year, Finland showed off the first commercial sand battery in the world. But how does this new and interesting technology work, and is it a good way to store energy? To understand the sand battery better, let's first look at the technology it's based on. Thermal Energy Storage TES. The Energy Information Administration EIA, says that in 2021, heating, cooling and ventilation used almost half of the energy used in buildings in the US. Unfortunately, a lot of this energy comes from sources that are bad for the environment. Natural gas is still the main way that more than half of all new American homes heat their homes. Studies show that 10% of the country's CO2 emissions come from heating water in buildings and running low-temperature industrial processes like making bricks and drying food. It's clear that adding more thermal storage units will make us much less reliant on fossil fuels, which will reduce the effect of our heat use on the climate. To understand the working of this technology, let's dive into it. Thermal energy storage test solutions that store heat in a sensible way are very popular and are used a lot. During the day or during the summer, when there's a lot of solar or wind energy, a liquid or solid is heated in this way. Electricity is run through a heating element that is in contact with the material being stored. In order to release the stored heat, the temperature of the battery is lowered by supplying cool air through pipes. Your medium for transferring heat can be as simple as water or as complicated as molten salts, which are often used with concentrated solar power. One of the main reasons we need more energy storage facilities is to keep solar and wind power from being turned off as much as possible. This happens when we make more energy than we need. A good example of this is when, on a windy day, you see wind turbines standing still. They turn them off because the energy they were making wasn't being used because of the low demand. The Australian energy market operator said that by 2050, more than 20% of renewable energy will be curtailed. Because of this, test systems could be very important for storing energy. Polar Night Energy, a Finnish startup, recently worked with Vadi Jankowski, a heating network operator from the district of Kankanpa, to make a 7-meter-tall sand battery with 100 tons of low-quality sand and a bunch of pipes. There, winter seems to last forever and temperatures can get almost as low as in Alaska. As you might expect, the huge need for heat during the long cold season means that costs are high. On the other hand, the sand battery will store clean energy during the summer when it's easier to get, and then use it during the long winter when there isn't much sunlight. Now more than ever, this would make a big difference. But how did the polar night energy turn a tank of sand into a battery that stores heat? Since the battery is connected to the grid, it gets extra electricity from the renewable sources. This is turned into heat, which is transmitted to the sand. To be more specific, the renewables power a resistance heater, which heats the air, which is then moved through the pipes and around the sand. Even though it sounds hard, they get their heat from resistive heating, which is how common appliances such as toasters work. As the startup said, their reservoir is well protected from the outside world, which means that they lose less heat over time. Their sand-based unit could reach temperatures of up to 1,112 degrees Fahrenheit approximately 600 Celsius, and keep the heat for months. Cool air is blown through the pipes hidden within the hot sand bed to create heat. The system then circulates the hot air, which can be used to generate cleaner steam for use in manufacturing, public water heating, or home heating. Sand storage for renewable energy is clearly awesome, but how does it compare to other storage methods? Simplicity is one of the top benefits of sand-based heat batteries. As stated by the startup's chief executive officer, it's really a typical silo which can be built in any steel workshop. Polar Night Energy could use any kind of sand from any place 
but the company focuses on reusing the sand that the construction industry throws away to reduce waste. And that's not the only good thing for the environment. In 2030, Polar Night Energy's sand battery could stop more than 100 megatons of CO2 from being released into the air each year. That's almost twice as much CO2 as New York City will put into the air in 2020. Polar Night Energy's sand-filled insulated tank can withstand high temperatures without losing its ability to keep the heat inside, and the company says it can last at least 50 years. Given the materials and parts used, that claim seems to make a lot of sense. Also, lithium-ion batteries' sweet spot for cost and energy storage is around 6 hours, but the sand-based device can be used to store energy for the whole year. So instead of turning it into electricity, it would be better for the environment and the economy to use the heat as it is. But what about the cost? While sand is dirt cheap, they'll need loads of steel pipes buried inside it which can inflate their expenses. Once their system can store 20 gigawatt hours of energy, the startup said it would cost 10 euros, about $10, per kilowatt hour. Their storage capacity is only 8 megawatt hours right now, so it will be a while before their technology can compete on a larger scale. Even though sand batteries are not the best way to get a world with no carbon emissions, they could be a key part in decarbonizing our power infrastructure if they are used with other chemical and thermal storage methods. When demand is low and supply is high, wind turbines don't need to be turned off. Instead, they can generate energy that can be stored in one of these sand batteries. I strongly believe that we need to focus on multiple green technologies, and this one, as simple as it is, can be very effective. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that the sand battery will become popular? Tell me what you think in the comments below. We'll see you next time.